Good afternoon, everybody. If you're joining us live, thanks for joining in. If you're watching this later, thanks for tuning in. I'm Sesame. I'm the program coordinator for the bookstore at Best Boys and Poets Books. And today I'm very happy to have Shane Evans, an incredible illustrator, join us to talk about his process and his new book, Why? A Conversation About Race. Hello, Shane. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? No complaints. It's how I usually break it down. It's all great. <laughs> good. And also joining us will be Megan Hope, an actor and voice artist who will be reading from Shane's fantastic book today. Hi, Megan. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. I'm so excited to hear the book and for you guys to see it because we will be putting it on screen. So without further ado, if you guys are ready. Yeah, we are. Perfect, let's get started. All right, today we are reading Why, written by Tay Diggs, illustrated by Shane W. Evans. A conversation about race. Daddy, yes, my sweet boy. Why are those people shouting? Our people are shouting because we need to be heard. We need to be heard. Oh. Mama? Yes, baby girl? Why are those people crying? Our people are crying because we are in pain. We are in pain. Oh. Nana, yes, my grandson. Why are those people pointing? Our people are pointing because we need help. We really need help. Oh. Granddad, yes, my lovely granddaughter. Why are those people marching? Our people are marching because we have been stomped and stepped on over way too long, way, way too long. Oh. The little children looked at the brown skin staring back in their reflections. He saw the bright light of fire through the window. She could smell the dark smoke. Family? Yes. Why are those buildings burning? Because, little one, when we get tired of shouting and not being heard, when we have cried so many tears from always getting hurt, when we scream out for help and continue to get ignored, when we march and march and march, but are not really moving, when all this happens, sometimes buildings must burn. The buildings burn for us. The anger burning those buildings is us. Then the children sat down and crossed her legs. He closed his eyes. Why are you praying, little one? They all asked. I'm praying for faith and love. If we have that, then maybe we can figure this all out. Maybe we will have peace. Yes, I believe we will figure this out. So they all sat down and closed their eyes and prayed. They all prayed for peace. Oh. The end. That was really nice. Um, <laughs> I want to... I want to acknowledge this setup right here. And, you know, I always like to acknowledge that. And it's really it's good to see you because we're, we've known each other for a while. Like for the audience, I just want to acknowledge that, you know, um, we know each other through Kansas City. And Kansas City is a really dynamic city in the middle of the country that uh, is an incredible place to, to be able to hone your craft and, get tuned in with yourself and actually in so many ways even the topic of this book 
this that city has been a, a showcase for mm. a lot, right? It's been a, mm. a showcase for a lot of uh I don't know, intelligent intelligent conversation about this type of topic. Um and a lot of people will say, you know, where are you from? You know, yeah, I, I was born in Oakland. I was raised in upstate New York, two or three cities, Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse. Spent mm. a lot of time in New York City, and then I moved to Kansas City. And in some ways, you know, you can be raised at any point in your life. Because um, I was in my early 20s when I moved to that city. So uh, that city has raised me quite quite beautifully. What, what's your thoughts on that, actually? I want to know. Um, on which part? There was so much there. <laughs> I mean, it's similar true. for me as far as the background. You know what I mean? I, um, I moved a lot growing up, but it was mostly in the Midwest. Um, and interestingly enough, yeah, I experienced a lot of, um, I mean, tangent racism, but then also, yeah, it's, it's nice to get to a place like Kansas City where you can have those conversations and, um, you know, people are really ready to go beyond just talking about, you know, um, the issues and, and even come up with solutions. And, and I think um, explaining this stuff to, to the younger, you know, younger people coming up is, is really important because um, uh, when I grew up, a lot of the time it wasn't talked about. It was like, oh, that's just the way it is. You know, I've had to kind of figure that out as I've grown into my adulthood um, out of my own curiosity. But there's been just so much more happening. And I think it can be a lot. Um, it's just beneficial. It goes so much further to, to explain to your little one personally, um, you know, why some of the things are the way they are. So yeah, just so they can better navigate the world, you know, and, and all the things that we have around us. So yeah, yeah, I like that. I mean, you know, I do want to get into the, you know, topically what we're going to kind of get into. Um, and I want to thank, I want to acknowledge, I, I have some like notes. One, I want to give thanks. You know, this is the season actually of Ramadan. So there are going to be people who are breaking the fast, millions of people all around the world in the upcoming days. So I do mm -hmm. want to acknowledge like the the spiritual wealth that's happening all around the, the, the globe right now. Uh, I like to give thanks to the Most High. Like um, even in every book, like the last slide that showed was a slide that is uh, a dedication page. And for those who are interested in, uh, you know, literacy in terms of writing books and illustrating books, I think for myself, one of the most incredible uh, offerings is to be able to say, and I'm, I'm pulling up the page right now for myself. If you physically have the book at home, Megan, I think you have a copy, actually. I heard you the do, book, yes. right? Yeah, I was hearing pages turn. Did I hear pages turn when I was... There did, because well, uh, there was a little, the Busboys and Poets sticker kind of got over words. I was like, oh, maybe I should follow along. But then, yeah, I, I just went with the screen after a bit. But yes, I have it here as well. Everyone That's at home. Oh, maybe not. That's I won't work with this crazy screen I got going on. <laughs> I would just want, because it says, actually, I said, to the, and every dedication is different. And all the books I've you know done close to 50, maybe. I don't know. Oh, it's, I'm starting to lose count, but it's like this, this moment to me is when I do complete a project, I like to really meditate and think about who I want to dedicate it to. And mm. uh, I say in this book, uh, I tell you, I want to acknowledge Say, of course, as well as the, uh, the author of this book. And we've been friends for many years. This is our fifth illustrated and authored book together. Um, it's been a really incredible honor. Tay is uh, dedicating this book, he says, to Walker and all the young ones. And then myself, I say to thanks to the most high love. Uh, thank God for the gift dedicated to my loving family, uh, to the little ones, be in joy. And I feel like there's something about a dedication. And I mean, I can imagine you can you can see that in your work as well. Like as, sure. as an actor, right? And anything that you do, you can acknowledge all those who helped you get to that space. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. So, and that being said, too, and even I want to go through some of these illustrations, actually. Um, Cecily, I know you're in the background there. Can you pull up illustrations and put them up and can we talk over them? Is that possible? Oh, look at that. Okay. Technology. Let's go back somewhere in the middle. You can, you can pick, actually, Cecily. You're, you're back there. 
stop when you whenever you okay yeah that, that one right there wait that one let's do that one yeah that's perfect i'm gonna get to that page this is towards the kind of conclusion of the book and i actually want to talk a little bit about the page and how i built that page i i tend to use um for all those artists out there i'm gonna actually sh show something here it's like a clipboard of all things so you know and another really really important tool for me is this sketchbook i have so many of them so many different sizes another important tool are these pens and, and uh these markers um, i've gone to a lot of schools all over the earth to be honest and when i've talked to a uh, young artist you know and they'll ask questions about those types of things i think that there are always uh tools at your at your fingertips you just have to really create them and I've, you know, recently I really started to re-explore the tool of like a stick in dirt and just drawing in that space, the stick in sand. So don't ever think that you don't have access to something. And, you know, it is very important to like, you know, acknowledge things like pens and pencils because in their simplicity with all the technology, you can really create some dynamic pieces with those. Um, and even, I don't know, on this clipboard, there are these two little these little sheets. I go to the hardware store sometimes and I just pick these color sheets from the, uh, like when you go to get paint swatches and I just draw on those. So you always have access. There's cardboard, you know, garbage day, go to your recycling bin, grab some cardboard. I've been recreating the experience for, even for myself. You can always revisit of, uh, you know, what it really feels like to create. I do actually, I'm going to hold this up i do use a tablet you know so i have kind of like you know i guess every piece of technology in some ways kind of caters to every individual um you know i was thinking about you megan like for you as per perhaps as an author of words for you to act from like i'm sure that are you writing by hand sometimes yeah, sometimes. That's that's the tricky part for me is to actually sit down and write it out. I get a lot of stuff off the top. Um, so I'm trying to get better about getting it, you know, to paper or some type of, um, you know, two dimension written out space. But yeah. And also you use computers or things like that. So computers, absolutely. My phone. I love paper. Even right now I'm taking notes like I'm also old school with just pencils and paper. I like tangible things like that. Okay. No Perfect. Yeah. There may be a bit of a delay on, on uh, oh. one of the things here. Uh, no, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Hey, yeah, and I was going to say, too, if you can hear me, it might be... Um, Oh, go ahead. Sometimes the bandwidths can be a little bit, um, okay. I don't know, better if you turn off your video. So that way we can, uh, it won't lag as much. I'll try the same on my end too. All right, let me see. Oh, there it is. Okay. What were you saying now? I was saying with this piece um, right here, this is a good combination of all the different mediums. Um, drawing this out first by hand and then uh, taking those images and putting them into an iPad and a uh, drawing program and then starting to color in. And then also looking at the words and the way this is laid out um, in terms of what Tay had written on the page before I got to the illustrations, the visuals, mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, create this uh, experience of uh, people, one, inside, they're inside, but if you've ever looked, you know, beyond a piece of glass, the reflection, you know, goes both ways. There's some a reflection on the outside and on the inside, you know, and mm -hmm. this moment where these children are talking about faith and love, which, you know, how would you you know it's like how would you draw faith and love so i think mm. in this moment i wanted to you know really key in on like there's a little bit of light right around the top of her head 
It's a mm-hmm. reflection of the stars, the color, you know, the, sometimes we, we all, we, we do talk about color and people. Um, mm-hmm. but the one thing I get to play with inside of these books is, you know, color, the color of your, your actual, your being when I'm creating them can mm-hmm. be things like purple. There's, can we turn back a page? Mm-hmm. We, yeah. There's the page with the family right there. Mm-hmm. You know, I took on the challenge of saying, well, they're in shadow a little bit. So, mm-hmm. you know, what is what would a shadow feel like, you know? And so I chose to use purple. Or the city is in blue, you know? Like, what does the nighttime look like? Somebody might say it, it's black, but, you know, for me, as a, for me as an artist, this is where I get to choose the various colors. Can we go back a couple more pages to where this the child is on the daddy's, uh, the granddad's actually shoulders? Can we get back mm-hmm. to that one? Right there. Um, I want to talk with this one about inspiration. Actually, I had I was inspired by a lot of the artists that were doing artwork in the uh, Harlem Renaissance with this piece. And taking these silhouettes and uh, coloring all these different colors. And, you know, especially with the theme of this book about race, it's like, Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, why why choose from, you know, limited palettes when really what we're talking about is the rainbow of humanity and all the different things that are going on within us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here's an opportunity where I got to play with colors, the colors of the background characters, and even the colors of the foreground characters, you know, um, and making some very distinct choices around coloring his hands, coloring them in blue, um, you know, the warm tones, even the environment is like, it's like they're floating in the sky and the sun. I'm, I'm very much about setting suns and moons and stars in the children's books that I've done. Uh, what else? That's yeah, wonderful know. detail right there. Um, yeah. You had started to touch on something earlier when you were talking about, um, you know, kind of to reflect the words or the content and match that, I guess, or, or how do you portray that? So is that normally part of your process where you will, you know, get the author's um, story first and then you go from there? Do you ever, you know, kind of meet in the middle? Like what, what is that process like for you? I mean, that's a good question. Um, with Tay and I, we've been doing uh, these books for so long. We've been friends for so long, too, mm-hmm. that there's a really honest respect between uh, author and illustrator in this in this regard. And, you know, as friends, and that's important, I think, for those who are working with friends, especially in the arts, there has to be kind of a, after a while, like, I think there's this camaraderie that just comes through and there's a, a process that you know the other person goes through. So in this instance, really Tay just sent me a text message that had the text written out. And in maybe a day, I sat down with my pencil. Um, actually, I think I had a, a little black ballpoint pen and a sketchbook. And I drew all these what we call thumbnail sketches, very small, and laid out all the pages that went along with the words that I was feeling. And then that visualized for me what I was going to be then filling in like with more detail. Mm. So yeah, the process for this for this book may be a little bit different than other books where you're working a lot in, in concert with, you could be working with, you know, an editor, you could be working with an art director. There are instances when people are working with uh, authors and illust- the author and illustrator might work directly together. I think more times than not though, you're mostly working from the text. So I think this, the collaboration between Tay and I has, has been a very unique one in that way because the process is, is, is more about like how he and I as friends, as family, how we connect on things. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Yeah, and I, I really love the details and you even just talking about that on this page specifically, you know, with this granddad's hands, you know, being of color and um, you know, a couple of pages forward when we are talking about the fire um, mm-hmm. and the way you reflect that, you know, like you said, you've got 
the stars in the sky, you've got the fire in the back, and then the smoke. I mean, is that part of when you start getting into, I guess, those more detailed things on your tablet? Is that something that you're doing there? Or are you also drawing that in or kind of a combination? That's a good question, Cecily. Can we forward to that that frame to the two four page? two pages forward? Yes. There's a um, that scene. Yeah. There's this scene. And then let's move to the next one, actually. Um, what I like about this moment specifically in the book is that I knew that I was going to go to the next scene. And this is like, you know, actually for me, I had to visualize how I was going to create this. So even if I work with a tablet, I still have to kind of like understand because I can just as easily paint this on a piece of paper and know that I can do it that way. So when I'm using a tablet, in some ways, I'm just kind of like, I'll, I use this word, I say, I like to reverse engineer, because having done, you know, painting for all these years, I know what it takes to get that same look and feel in some ways on the tablet. Um, can we go to the next, to the next page, jump to the next one, then, you know, um, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a reference. I actually have some comic books on my on my desk. One of the things that I do like to have around is other inspiration. I like to have music playing when I'm working. I like to have books that I'm reading around me. I like to have other people's artwork there. Um, I have some comic books sitting on my desk, and I did want to kind of reflect upon the idea here of like I knew that I would turn the page and I would add some characters and they would come into the frame. So, you know, using frames within frames, because if you think about it, books are frames. So I use these windows inside of the, the frame of the book. And in some ways, this is like a comic book. There's a little bit of action happening. And then in terms of, uh, again, this, this question that you asked, it is it's uh, the smoke. And, um, you know, even if you look at the page prior, there's a little bit of dark smoke. And then there's some kind of light smoke here. Maybe it's the end of the fire. Who knows? But to like, you know, I know how smoke and, and uh, fire works. You know, I like have worked with uh, things called like, I worked in foundries before making metal furniture. So it's it's a it's a element that we have to really respect. And, and it moves around, it's very elegant. So when I started into the visual part of this on the page, I wanted a hint, I didn't want it to overwhelm. But I think most children, most adults kind of know the dangers, but they also know the beauty of like what smoke and fire can do. And yes, so this page is like a very beautiful, again, combination of uh, digital elements and you know some traditional elements too. Can we go back to our regular screen and see our beautiful faces, please? Is that possible? <laughs> There I'm we gonna, go. Right here we go. I'm gonna like pop some. I'm gonna pop some books up. This um, this is Chocolate Me. This is the first book by Tay and myself. This is this is Mixed Me, and I think it's important, you know, in the dialogue about race, that to know that that's where we started, and then you know, I'm gonna show a different format of the book, and I and so you know, here we have a, a soft cover of chocolate me and here we have a, a board book you know and i'm going to just like the feeling of this book you know, for those who and i want to acknowledge bus boys of course it's an incredible bookstore i've been to the one i'm not sure if it's the main one um it's on one of the uh, letter streets there in dc incredible food incredible vibe um incredible like stage uh for people to perform and obviously the incredible bookstore so like just acknowledging that the way that books are like created, this is for like little kids, like they wanna know on corners of books. This is like for the long the long term, you know, this is gonna live in somebody's like library collection. Um, I wanna talk about this book quickly as well. Cause this friendship, you know, relationship that, uh, I do think in many ways can support some of the things that happen to us. You have mentioned like going through things as a child and you know some of the places that you live. I think the 
there's something really important to be said about like creating good friendships, good relationships in your family. Those things can help um, a lot of things, actually, even what we're talking about through creativity. One of the reasons why I'm, I want to ask you this question as well, actually. One of the reasons why I create, right, is because I had the support of family and friends. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, how can you, how, why do you do what you do? Um, well, I also believe in a higher power. So I think that that's a lot of it as it just feels like it, it is a, a gift or a talent, something that I'm just meant to do. And I think um, I'm doing my best to, you know, honor that. Um, but almost the opposite. I don't want to say my family wasn't so supportive. Um, I think they just were scared, like a lot of parents can be in family, you know, they don't want, they, they get stuck in that stereotype of like a starving artist. So they're like, you should get a real job. You know what I mean? So I had to overcome that. And, and even aside from that, um, for me, I had some challenges, most definitely growing up. And so now that I am maybe later in life, um, you know, getting to the arts more in depth for myself, um, it's kind of more of like yeah, an expressive outlet to to help maybe heal some of that, I think. Um, so yeah, that's me. That's <laughs> so everyone has their reasons, yeah. but yeah, you know, however we get here, we as long as we're here, right? <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. I mean, and I, I appreciate that because um, I guess back to the intense. There's an intensity to this to this question. Yeah. Right. I was wondering that. I didn't want to ask, but I do want to know. So please. <laughs> um. I mean, yeah, this is good, good because, you know, why, from the from the perspective of like, what happened, when we look at history and specifically what was happening at this time. I got this text from Tay. Um, Black Lives Matter started to like rise, rise up, and uh, and it was rising up like worldwide. I started to see the world take shape, and I think that those who lived the experience uh, um, had a, a wide range of feelings about it. Uh, for myself specifically, I was like, I know this story already. Um, and so I want to kind of step back a little bit and observe like what other people go through. So I was gaining a lot of what I call wisdom in the, in the process of uh, watching many things unfold. And I have to acknowledge the name George Floyd when that experience took place. Um, and I think Tay was feeling the same thing. Um, he mentioned to me that he was overseas actually when he felt like he was going to have to sit down with this child and, and speak about this. So to be honest, the question why in the text came to me and um, the you know literal story in a text came to me. And I remember seeing the question why and thinking to myself, it had been a question that I had avoided for a long time. Like, because, you know, when children ask the question, like, why, it could just go on and on and on. But I say, you know, children almost to reference, like, everyone who, like, has access to the word itself. So adults can ask it over and over again. And maybe there's no really one good answer to it. You know, like, why is the sky blue? Like, you'll get a scientific answer about it. And you might get someone who creates something really, really beautiful, you know, artistically about why the sky is blue. So I think uh, how we got to this space was just being honest. Something about the honesty of that day and time when and he wrote those words out. And when I seen them, I put the, the protest down around the word and just was like, I'm going to honor it, you know. So I think that has a lot to do with how we got there. Um, I want to acknowledge to the audience out there as well, if there are any questions, I, I'm not sure. I think there's a, a way to type questions in, and then I will be able to see questions 
in the screen somewhere. So if anybody has anything um, they'd like to ask, please feel free. I'm, I'm going to pop this book up too because this came up in my field. This book is called Underground. And I think these guys in so many, many ways, like there's a relationship with us that, like you have, you have the Underground Railroad, which is something I learned about as a child. And then when I had the opportunity to like write this story out um, and illustrate, this is, that's a piece that I had both written and illustrated. Um, I had already known, I thought I knew so much about it until I started working creatively out of it for all those people who are uh, expressing themselves creatively. And Megan, I like what you shared right there that, um, I mean, families may turn around and individuals around you may turn around and, and acknowledge this later on, but it does take that, you know, that push. You can get to that space when you know you, that this is what you have to articulate, this is what you have to share. Uh, there's kind of just no holding you back, you know, because family members around us um, are supporting, and there's some family members that are like not supporting. There's always going to be like, a balance outside of that space. So that was good. I appreciate that share. Any any other? I don't know. You're good at this. Uh, this is a little <laughs> bit impromptu, I know. So I thank you for it. It is. I have all the questions. Um, yeah, yeah so good. many things. Um, I, I did start to jot some down as, as I was going through. Boop -a -da -boop. But you covered so much, even just talking right now. Um, I guess while you're talking about the support, you know, and how people come around, like, how did you, um, I guess, yeah, how did you initially know that you had this passion for illustrations? And then when you found out, what did you do to start those first steps? I think, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't mean, I'm, I'm, obviously I'm acknowledging, you know, audiences as well. And, you know, I'm thinking at the least uh, out there that I would say to somebody in like uh, kin kindergarten or first grade right now is listening. When I was that age, I was passionate about like drawing. I really liked it. I thought it was a really intelligent language. I didn't think about it as a language then. But I also did not, if I drew something that someone could see it and acknowledge what it was and they got it right. So there was something about the affirmation of that that encouraged me to keep it moving. Then, um, you know, all it really takes is one person to encourage. Like if there's a thousand haters, like it, all it could take is one encourager to keep you so the only, if the one encourager is yourself, then that's probably one of the best people to like keep you moving, motivated. And I do have to acknowledge like teachers that were around me during that time. Again, some family members that were artists as well that kept me motivated. And for artists, for many of the artists out here and people that is not a lot of thing, you know, that is a certain time. Um, like there's a lot of practice involved and I think that practice began when I was probably in like, you know, kindergarten, that, that really that desire to like want to draw over and over and over again. Um, and your hands, you know, like think about what your hands do on a daily basis. So I think the coordination between like your thoughts and your hands and working in that space and then over school doing have access, you know, I did take it for, I didn't take it for granted. I actually just thought that that was like cause the school environment. I took, you know, the opportunities when they were there all the time. So, I mean, you know, I want to encourage those who are in schools to like reach out to the teachers and, and take on opportunities. You can go beyond the classroom as well. I, I remember a lot of that taking place. So I think for me, it's always about like the continuation in my own like desire 
and then you know collaboration is huge like it's something that i think maybe it's my new motto for the year it's like collaboration reaching out to other uh people outside your your comfort zones and help they i don't know they help t- us tap into that kind of inner child moment because i have to stay connected to that five-year-old sometimes to get to the space and then i have to be very like professional and adult so what about you i want to yeah i want to flip that question because i want to i I do want to acknowledge the reading that you did was really really beautiful no thank you Um, so what what keeps motive for sure um what keeps you motivated and like what got you like into this focus Kind of similar options, except for I didn't always take advantage probably of, or I didn't maybe seek out of things above and beyond, right? So I knew specifically to voice acting um, and like animation and, and narrating, you know, stories that um, when I was also a little kid, probably about the same age, I just was fascinated. I don't know if it was Nickelodeon or what back in the day, they would kind of show during some commercial breaks, like behind the scenes of the characters coming to life. And when I realized that they were other people, usually adults even, voicing some of my favorite characters, my mind was blown. And I was like, I want to do that. Um, And, you know, I think the most I probably touched on it growing up was just, I would randomly, not always randomly, but make these interesting noises or kind of just play with my voice in everyday conversations. And, you know, I usually would kind of use it comically, whether I'm cracking a joke or trying to make someone, you know, laugh. Um, And then as I got, you know, into the arts, into acting and entertainment, it was something I wanted to pursue at that point when I realized, okay, now's my time. Um, But voiceover in itself is a whole other thing that I kind of wanted to um, make sure I'm ready for so I could give it proper energy to to really train and study um, and uh, I'll never stop learning, but especially in that I'm still, there's still a lot for me to learn. Um, but it, it is nice to, to feel like I've gotten a nice foundation going so far. So I don't know if that answers the question, but that's, that's where I'm at currently. <laughs> Does, um, that answers the question and then some actually, cause you you are touching on, that's one thing that I do think about a lot and working forward and I think about the actors that are the parents, actors that are the children that are the actors that are actors to to actually take, I mean, I, I, of course, I noticed the moments where you took on the two characters change the voices and, mm-hmm. and that's really important you know because it helps us to kind of see see what's on the page as well well mm-hmm. um and some of these projects have been you know we've been talking about like how to bring them into the animated world and, and into the space as well mm-hmm. but you know yeah there's some to me, that I'm, I'm holding up. I'm holding what what I think about is technology. This is this is technology. The point in time. So this does give you the opportunity to. Um, I don't know. Like I use this page from the from underground. There's kind of a moment in this in this moment where me as even a, an artist, I might have to get up and feel it's like to you know crawl on the earth. Or I might actually need to go physically to a window. Um, so I think that there's something to be said about the arts. You know, I'm really talking really about the arts here. It's like the, the mm-hmm. idea of acting, the idea of writing, music, coming together. Um, and I think that that's like books kind of are that vehicle mm-hmm. um, for that experience. Because I have had, yeah, I've had teachers take the books into classrooms and make skits and things like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh-huh. amazing to me, I think, to see 
Well, but. Ooh, you're breaking up a little bit. That's interesting that um, you kind of segued into the classroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and yeah, you touched a little bit too on um, me trying to just, even if it's somewhat subtle, uh, showcase the two different characters. Like if we're in a scene, whether it's just those two pages to kind of show, you know, the two different people who are whomever is in the scene. So far, what I'm coming to find in, in the narration world anyways, that sometimes they like just one plain voice for the whole story. But um, I've also worked with kids in, in my past and even just, you know, sitting down and story time and, and doing those different um, inflections seems to go far, especially when you're doing, um, yeah, stories for the younger kids. They can really appreciate that. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's kind of what inspired me to do that with this read. And um, that's awesome that teachers are bringing it in and encouraging their students to, like you say, do skits and kind of put their own spin on it or bring it to life in, in a more three-dimensional format. Um, I think that just further helps to inspire these kids to create and to go you know, above and beyond with their imaginations or continue the story and, and continue to ask questions like why and, you know, so that's really good stuff. I'm excited to hear more about maybe at a different time or if you'd like now about the animation thoughts in your future. Um, but yeah, I think you answered most of my question. I don't know if any have come up. I wasn't really um, paying attention to, to how they come up. Maybe um, Sesame will let us know. A tangent, when you were talking earlier though, this is my last one, maybe. Um, you mentioned your setting when you're creating your illustrations, um, how you like to be by, you know, current books that you're reading and everything else and music, how, I guess, how much of a part does that play with your inspirations? And for example, with this book specifically, what music, if you can recall, were you listening to while, um, you know, drawing or sketching, if you care to share, maybe even just the genre. For sure. I mean, I'm gonna. You covered a lot of base there too. You use the word imagination just now, and, and what you. Sharing. Um, I do. I want to talk to the audience actually. I want people to start utilizing their imagination this week. You know, this weekend, today, really, just start today, and. Uh, because if I start defining what imagination is, it's like almost contrary to what the true feeling of the word is really about. Um, to the question around like music and literature, um, and I've kind of expanded the idea of literature to include our access points, you know, like sometimes YouTube is a literary source uh, because uh, ample source too, you know, even though there's visuals attached to it, um, I have access to all this information. Um, so I might tap into those sources, but I definitely, I have this book, um, about the Black Panthers, for example, uh, black and white photographed. I love some, uh, Gordon Parks and what he was graphing during his time, uh, you know, once you once you start doing the research, you might find other. Uh, I don't know. Research usually finds me in a place where I can group other things that feel similar together that I did not prior know about. Music that came to mind when you asked that question. I was thinking about Marvin Gaye's "What's Going On" this album. You can be today, no problem. Just jump right in. It's not like you have to be from that time period to like have access to the music. I have my guitar sitting back here, so myself playing music is an inspiration. I think that's important to the uh, creative process. Actually, to take some breaks from what you're. Mm -hmm. that's such a good tip i i often get so like in my tunnel vision i forget about the breaks i'm so sorry
right you see what i'm saying yep you got it mm -hmm. um when i take those breaks and i'm listening to you know marvin Gaye's what's going on and i'm walking down the street like i'm living the experience you know mm -hmm. so then when i come back to my focus my drawing like my inspiration is different you know mm -hmm. um yeah that's a good question i you know i just, I should probably sit with that one because I'm working on work around music and part of the work and make it this too part of the work isn't always like work of like drawing that's not the only part of the work like so when I get to the place when I'm painting and drawing that I'm I'm really excited about it because I'm starting to see it but part of the work could be like the interaction with other artists, uh, other musicians, people in the community. That could be a really important art, really an artistic, you know, a flame for the, for like how I got to like get to this visual. Um, yeah, because this like in some ways this just came to me. I, I like let's get all the family members like lined up kind of one by one in this in this piece and then the angle even cutting cutting across the page I just I, I feel like somewhere in my experience I've had this thing happen to me you know so if you can pull a resource that like one of these I don't know I feel like we're coming almost to the conclusion we got like 10 minutes or so left. Yeah. Um, well, I did have a couple other thoughts. The more the I more that you talk, really the more that I have thoughts too. Um, speaking of your inspirations, I meant to ask this earlier about, um, you know, especially one of the families in the book, um, the, the adult is wearing like a hijab or a headpiece. And I was just wondering if you wanted to touch base or touch a little bit more about that inspiration um and yeah incorporating some of these different backgrounds yep thank you thank you for acknowledging that I had done a book called Red Pen, and um, it was a a beautiful piece that was set in uh, in the I'll say in the continent of Africa. It was set in that tone, and uh, the red pencil book mimicking the hand of the artist inside the book. So that was kind of like to talk about acting within another realm. Like illust as illustrator, I was acting as if my hand were the hand of another artist. And uh, part of the the dress in that book was was a hijab. And so when I was putting this book together, to be honest, like because I already had that relationship from another project, when I got to that page and I was looking at the, the wide uh, range of diversity of the why and like who can access this question, I just wanted to, like, she just popped up, like, no one said, make sure you have this in the book. So another opportunity as an artist where I had access to that information because I wanted it for myself or had done another project like that. And then when I had opportunity to showcase a wide range of people, she just, I mean, she literally just popped up. Like, I just started sketching and I was like, this is what? who I want her to be and uh, what I want her to dress like, you know, we know, I mean, I guess in some ways we know very little about the characters in the book. We have, a, we have like a snapshot. So I wanted to make sure that that snapshot spoke volumes to, you know, how she presented herself as a person and her relationship to her, you know, I believe it's her, it kind of is a reference towards it could be her grand her grand uh, son, so I think that that came up 
from that from those choices that I had made um, in other you know relationships with other art. I even have music playing right now. I just love the background. <laughs> You're doing a great I job wanna, of hiding um, it. <laughs> yeah, right. I want to like. Uh, I want to talk about like this on this last page. Like you know, we're getting close. This to me, you know, I want to say I actually almost started the whole entire. Uh, project with this panically the moment that i knew i was like all right well here's some vignettes i the frame down the way that the so uh just rhythmic rhythmically it felt like um every time there was a, a question it could have been just two two people i, I recognize that it could have been the same two people you know walking through their experience until it expanded into the idea of family there was Maybe a moment where you can call for more people, um, but I I thought about it, and you know, back it's even back to what you're what we were saying about voices and the choices. I started to hear the different voices of uh, the question, uh, girl voices, boy voices, you know, adult voices, etc. Uh, all voices, to be honest, like people who identify with the wide range of humanity that we are in right now what does it sound like and then i had to think about what does it look like and then i, I wanted to you know kind of take a camera you know this is this is a little bit of like an acting thing but it's like i wanted to take a camera angle at this that was a little bit different too and i i have said this before i took the ant's eye view like a little insect's view of what is happening uh, from their from their perspective, and uh, that come together moment I thought was really important as well for the for the characters, and so I think in many ways I remember like this image coming pretty pretty early on, and then once I I got different characterization, is that I pulled them out and put them forward and then put them into the each each individual situation. So, you know, I think we, we did all different directions sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm sure with like I know this actually with video work and television work and movies and plays and books, there's always there's always a, a editorial process that takes place where when you see the whole you might want to move some things around and make it flow a little bit different, a little bit better. For sure. Yeah, definitely getting that outline for the story. And it, it's I like how you started here and kind of like you were saying before, reverse engineered it. Right. You have this big aha moment. I also love the little details. It's not little, but, you know, the details of this aha moment and then the sun's in the background, like, you know, the biggest light bulb of them all. Right. And I just. Well done, you know, to, to like you were saying too at one point, snapshots. That's all we really have, but you use those snapshots to say a lot, right, within it all. So I appreciate that for sure. It just puts a whole other layer, um, you know, into the story. So thank you for that. Beautiful stuff. That's what's up. As I'm closing the book too, I'm looking I at. see somebody on this. I see. Yes, LA 533. There we go. Congrats. I just had right. a quick question too. I'm kind of hogging it. I know. I'm sorry. I need more people to just, you know, come in. Um, yeah, know this, what was that? Well, really quick. The back of uh, this. This um, was it. This is about it. I was just going to ask you about this inspiration. Um, I love the details that you had. I don't know if you can see on my wonky screen. Maybe you can put it up for this you. This is why we're here. This is perfect. Yes. The the, the, right. Well, the people, you know, at the bottom, like in the windows, walking and like just living everyday life with all the birds flying. Like, I don't know. I just I really, really appreciated that and didn't know if you had any, um, you know, thing to say about what led you to to, you know, create that to end with it. Uh, 
this that's a good that's a perfect one actually um spending time in the midwest uh there are times when i'm walking down the street and it'll just be me and i'll go for blocks and not see anybody else walking and then you know i i like to rise actually very early in the morning and walk so then when i do someone on the street there are times where I'm like, it'd be a little bit weird if I don't say hello, you know, to acknowledge them. And uh, it's, I've always, it usually is pretty well received. There are times when somebody maybe hear me, I don't know, maybe there's no desire to acknowledge. And with my, I can, I can say it up in my, I heard, I actually heard a voice. That thing that I learned in Kansas city and i brought it to new york i was spending a lot of time in new york and with all the people that are there like no one sometimes there's like desire to talk so you might be walking down the street and all these people and like nobody's acknowledging each other so when i have you know on with that like you know acknowledge people in new york you know, whenever anybody says, oh, this city's not friendly, I'm like, what about you, though? You know, what's your, what have you brought to this? So when I bring that energy to those places, it's like, it, like it's well-received, very well-received. So I wanted to, like, reflect that in this last page that, you know, there can always be urgency. There can always be this feeling of, like, I'm outside, I'm doing my thing, I'm stretching my arms, I'm, like, riding my bike i'm just looking at the image myself i'm scroll i'm strolling down the street um my loved one in the, the baby carriage i'm with the dog like even the birds like acknowledging them it's, i don't know sometimes in big cities you don't acknowledge like i've seen birds like i've seen hawks in cities seagulls in cities um so i want to make sure that the bird feature in the page as well um, and then even buildings, you know, at some point I wanted to be an architect when I was a child. So as an illustrator, I actually get to, I get to exercise my hand as an architect and create neighborhoods and things like that. So I think a co it's like a combination of all of that experience in that one page. Wow. That's, that's amazing. That's inspiring. Yeah. And, you know, takeaway from that is, to yeah, to to stop and whether it's smell the roses or the fresh air, to acknowledge those little things. You know what I mean? That that can go so far because sometimes yeah, we get busy in life, we forget to to just notice the people and things around us. That's beautiful. Perfect. Um, I'm well, acknowledging time now because I recognize that it's technically. And we're probably at about of an hour. Yeah, that's fair. I appreciate everything. Thank you for answering all my many, many questions. Um, because I, I guess I'm that big kid that can just say why endlessly. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing me to help, you know, bring some audio to this story. And yeah, thank you for doing what you do to help create, continue to inspire others to, to have these great conversations. And thank um, you, bus boys and poets. For hi, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. My camera was a little bit shaky, so I needed to sort it out. I was freezing. I think the connection is a little bit struggling for all of us over here. Um, but I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. So We're just getting a little bit of lag on your end, Shane. Well, I appreciate everything. I guess because we are we're wrapping up. Um, for more things about Shane, we could probably go to your website. I think you had it at the bottom. Yep. Yes, I Shane did. Evans. I had it below, right there. Perfect. You can check out, and you can also check out your website. Oh yes, right here. <laughs> yeah, my thank you, love. No Shane, problem. any last final thoughts? Anything about uh, why or what's next? 
If we can get it. If we can get it, yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. I think you can hear me now, yeah? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you a little bit. Your your camera's frozen, but we're getting we're getting you in and out. Maybe we can try taking the video off again just to get some audio from you. Hopefully. <laughs> yes, if you want to try that, Shane, just to do the last last thoughts there. I'm going to go ahead and exit as well to see if that helps. Thank you. All right, I think. Hey. Are we uh, are we having any luck there? I want. All right. Unfortunately, I don't think we're. Ah, there we go. says so much but I'm just gonna talk if it can be awesome. uh, McMillan Tay like everybody who's been from uh, you know have a great day you know enjoy it all and I thank y'all Okay. Okay. I don't know if you can hear, right. but I just, I'm just re, I'm just re saying thank you, thank you to everyone involved. All right, we did hear you a little bit there at the end, okay. thankfully. And I would just like to say thank you again to you guys for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Megan. I really loved it. Those illustrations are beautiful. I enjoyed showing them on screen. I hope you enjoyed seeing them. And we'll see you next time. Have a good evening. <laughs>